Checkboxes and interactive buttons are a great feature in Proto.io. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a button that only becomes active once two checkboxes are selected. Step 1. Adding Elements To begin, add two checkboxes, two buttons, descriptive labels, and an interaction area to your canvas. These can all be found in the UI panel. Now, each checkbox needs to be inactive. To do this, click on a checkbox, select Properties, and deselect the Active box. Again, make sure to do this for both boxes. One button also needs to be inactive. To do this, click on a button, and under Size and Position, deselect Visible. Then, place the Active button over top of the Inactive button. Now, once you're ready to add interaction, do so, but place it off the canvas and onto the pasteboard. Step 2. Creating Variables Click on Settings, then select Variables Manager. Click Add Variable. We'll be creating four variables in total. For the first, name it Checkbox Val 1. For Type, select Numeric. For value, leave blank. And then check the evaluate box. Then click save variable. Follow these exact steps when creating the next three variables. The first is called checkbox val2. The second, no of checked. And the third, show button. These variables will be used throughout our project. Step 3. Setting up the interaction area. Select the interaction area and click Add Interaction. For Trigger, select Tap. For Action, select Variable. For Variable Name, select No of Checked, which by default is empty. For Value Type, select Custom Value. Now, press Shift plus Curly Bracket to bring up all available variables. Remember, we created four. Select the checkbox one val variable, then insert a plus sign, then press shift and curly bracket again, and select checkbox val two. It should read like you see on our screen. Okay, let's recap what we've done. The purpose of this interaction is to calculate the number of checkboxes. When the area is tapped, which is the trigger, a new variable is set, which is the action. The variable is no of checked, which is short for number of checked, referring to the checkboxes. By default, it's empty. Its new value is the combination of the values of both checkboxes. Step 4. Adding an interaction to checkbox 1. Click on a checkbox and then Interactions. Select Add Interactions on Activation. Step 5. Defining the checkbox number one interaction. For trigger, select tap. For action, select set variable. For variable name, select checkbox one val. For variable type, select custom value. For new value, input one. And for delay, select no delay. Again, let's recap what we've done. When a checkbox is tapped, that is the trigger, a new variable will be created, that is the action. This variable is the value of checkbox number one, which by default is zero, it's empty. The new variable is a custom value of one. Hey, quick reminder, if you're finding this helpful, please give us a thumbs up, that would be incredible. All right, back to it. Step six, adding a callback to the first checkbox. To add a callback, check the box beside callback. For action, select fire an items event. For target, select screen. For screen, select your current screen. For item, select interaction area one. And for items event, choose tap. Leave delay as no delay. Let's recap. When interaction one is completed, another action called a callback will automatically begin. The purpose of the callback is to start another event, 
which is Fire an Items Event. The item is Interaction 1, which as you remember is located off the canvas. And the event that will be fired on that item is a Tap Event. Step 7. Completing the checkbox interactions. Now, save the interaction. Then, right-click on it and select Copy. Then, right-click on Add Interaction on Deactivation and select Paste. Now, edit the interaction by clicking on the pencil. All that needs to be done is to change the new value to zero. By doing this, you are resetting the value of the checkbox to zero when it is deactivated. Follow the exact same process for the second checkbox, and you can copy and paste to speed things up. The only difference is that the variable name will be checkbox val2, not checkbox val1. Step 8. Adding a callback to the interaction area. Okay, back in the interaction area, we need to add a callback. To do this, click on the interaction area, select interactions, and select the previous interaction that we created. At the bottom, click on add a callback. For action, select set variable. For variable name, select show button which by default is empty. For value type, select custom value. For new value, enter the following Java. Now, without going into too much detail, the Java basically says that if, which is the question mark, that the number of checkboxes equals two, that is the double equal signs, then the new value of show button should be one. Otherwise, the colon, it should be zero. All right, now leave delay. The purpose of this callback is to decide whether or not to make the active button visible. Step nine, adding a second callback to the interaction area. Now click add callback. For action, select change property. For screen, select your current screen. For item, select the active button. For property, select visibility. For value type, select read from variable. For variable name, select show button. And for duration, select uh, 300 milliseconds. For easing, select what you want. We'll select linear. One last recap. The purpose of this second callback is to change the visibility of the active button depending on how many checkboxes are selected. Upon its activation, this callback will change the property, that is the action, of the active button, that is the item, from invisible to visible, that is the property. It will determine this based on the findings of callback number one, which is read from the show button variable. The button will fade in within 300 milliseconds. Our final step, step number 10. All right, let's save the interaction. Save the project and preview the app. As you can see, when one box is selected, the active button remains invisible. However, when two are selected, the active button becomes visible. Again, when we deselect a button, the active button returns to an invisible state. So, as you can see, all of the interactions as well as callbacks are working and flowing together properly.